Good day everybody. Welcome to the Garmin Phoenix 7 Pro tutorial series. In this video, I will assume you know the basic functionality of the watch and know how to access all the relevant menus. If you are unfamiliar with the watch controls, please go to the overview video first. You can either click on the card at the top right or follow the link in the description below. Now on to the topic at hand. Good day. Today we're going to see how to create a course on Garmin Connect. Now, if you open up your app, you'll come to the home screen. You will have to press the three little dot buttons more menu at the bottom right. There you will see a menu option called training and planning in the middle. Click on that. And then the first option on the second part of this screen, it says courses. Click on that. If you have any courses saved onto your device, I mean onto your phone, not your watch, because they may be different, um, you will show it here and you can view it. Or we are going to create a new course now, so you press the blue plus button at the top right. Firstly, it's going to ask you what type of course this is. We're going to do a running course. Now you've got two options. You can either have Garmin create a course for you automatically or you can make your own custom course. Let's just do the automatic course first. It's going to ask you a distance to run. All right, first it's going to ask you your course name. So let's name this tutorial or two. Okay. It's going to ask you a distance. Let's keep that on five kilometers. And then it's going to ask you a direction it should go into first. Um, so if you know the area a bit and you know which direction you want to run, maybe it's early morning you want to run, so you don't want to run um, into the sun, you don't want to go east, or if it's late afternoon, you don't want to start out with your eyes in the sun, so you're not going to go west. But let's just keep it on north for now. We'll see what changes it makes if we change that. Now we're going to say next, and it will take us to our current location. So you're going to start by clicking somewhere on the map where you want your course to start at. So let us start it right in front of the house. And there it will generate a course for you starting north. Now, as you can see, I've got right north of me, I've got a mountain, so it's not going to go up there. But it does start going up from here towards the north, and then it goes towards the west and continue in a loop. Now, obviously, because the roads can't be a perfect distance, it will try to make the distance as close to the one that you chose. So here we can see at the bottom, it says the distance of this course it created was 5.45 kilometers long. Our ascent is 45 meters, our descent is 54 meters. If we open, if we drag this bottom screen up, we've got some extra info about the course that it made for us. We can see our elevation plot over there, our minimum and maximum elevation above sea level. We've got the course name, the running type. Privacy is if this course is available to other Garmin Connect users or just to yourself. Turn notifications mean um, you want the watch to tell you to turn when you're approaching a corner. So for instance, if we were to start by the start of the course, we're going to run up about 30 or 40 meters before this turn here, it will tell us to start turning left. Will tell us it's going to we have to start turn left in 30 meters or 40 meters that will count down and you will have another prompt at the turn that you need to turn left then obviously at 23rd avenue it will tell us to turn right and then left again yeah at 22nd avenue turn right and then left in crots and then the next turn notification will probably be only be here by 10th avenue so that is what this turn notification means now, if we go from the top, all the options we've got, on the top right-hand side here is our layers. So at the moment, it is on satellite view. We can be on default view, which is maybe a little bit easier to start out on with. It's a lot clearer on where you're going to run at. Then we've got terrain view. Terrain view just gives you some elevation lines on mountains and so on. That will normally be more something you choose if you were not inside the city. Then at the bottom, we've got two options here. We've got our popularity heat map on or off. At the moment, it's on. So that is all these purple lines that you see across the map. 
the darker the purple line, the more frequently other Garmin users have run that that street or that um, segment. If you, you can switch it off and then all the purple lines will be gone. That is just the data that Garmin has collected over the years from people using Garmin devices on which courses and which roads and so on they take. Now the distance markers, we can see here um, on our cars, we've got a couple of circles, so for one, two, three, four, five in it. That's the kilometers that we that that's on the course. So if we switch that off, that will go away. Let's switch all both of them back on again. The info menu here will just give you a map legend. Um, just tell you what is what. So we'll tell you the blue is the course that is designed for you, and purple is the popularity heat map. Then we've got the little circle with the three buttons here in the middle. If we press that, there's a couple of, of info to or selections to do here. View details is just going to be the same as dragging this, the bottom part up. Then we've got reroute. Now, if we say reroute, it's going to give you go back to the to the setup so you can change the course name, the distance direction. Let's change the direction now. Let's say we want to start going east. And we're going to select reroute and you will see our course will reroute to the east. You will also notice that the course distance has changed. Um, again, it can't get to exactly five kilometers and it has decided this is the closest it can get to five. So then we can add a course point. Course points is just some things that it will, it will notify you when you get close to this point. So let's say you're doing a long run and you know there's a water point somewhere. So at a tap or something next to the road, you can click water and then you will see the water point will go into the middle of your screen. Now, if you move the map around, that water point will stay in the middle. So you need to move that water point to somewhere on the course. So if we go in closer and we know that there is a tap there to drink water from, we're going to position it over there and then we're going to say place point. Now your watch will notify you when you get to that point that you are at a water point. Something to note is that um, I would suggest you go over the course before you save it. For instance, if we come into here, you will see Garmin is trying to get us um, this corner here, to cut this corner here. It's going in between streets and we don't know what's going on there. So I would suggest going and putting on satellite view and see what's going on there. Now you will see it tries to take us through a little piece of felt there. Now if you know the area, you will know that if there's a fence or not, or if it's gated or something, that maybe you can or cannot run through there. Um, if you know that you cannot, then you're going to have to edit this course to cut out that little piece over there. Now we can save this course. So you can either press save there or bring it up and press save. The course has been saved. Now to send it to your device, you just press on the send to device key there at the bottom right. You choose the device you want to send it to. So maybe you've got more than one watch connected to this common connect or you've got a um, cycling computer or something you want to send it to. You're going to select that. I'm going to se select obviously my watch. Right. Now to sync it to the watch, you can exit here. You can go to your home screen and then on the top next to your watch will be the sync button that you can press and then it will sync to your watch and that course will be downloaded to your watch. Next up, we'll try to create a custom course in Garmin Connect. We're going to select again the more menu at the bottom right. We're going to go to training and planning. We're going to select courses. Here is the automatic course we just created using the automatic function. Now let's create a new course and do it a running course again. This time we're going to select custom. Let us just change our filter to default just to be easier to see. Now it's going to ask us again Tap and hold anywhere on the map to add a point to your course. So we need to start somewhere. So we are going to start over there. Now we are going to customly create the course. So there's two ways of doing that. 
you can either tap or hold the next point that you want to select where you're going to run to or in the middle of the map there's a little point button that you can press that is the most accurate to do so press on that little point button and you will see in the middle of the screen it created a little black and white dot now you move your map to place that dot somewhere so you place it on the corner of the street and then you're going to press the place point button at the bottom left of your screen there we go so we start at the start point and we run north and at this moment you can see at the bottom our course is 0 0.13 kilometers long something to check for is to check your routing options now there's three options to do the routing you can either follow popular routes so it will use the purple um, lines to make the best route for you you can say it should follow the roads or you can say it should go freehand now let's quickly see what happens if we say freehand if i want to go from the point that we are now at i want to go select there I want to come to this corner here if I place a point there you will see that it makes a straight line from the previous point to the one I just selected now so it is going to ignore this little bend in the road that I'm going to run at which means that your course is not going to be very accurate regarding distance as you can see at the moment it says 1.11 kilometers in total Let's see if we choose for it to follow the road. So we're going to undo this point we placed. We're going to change our routing options to follow road. And now we're going to place the point again where we just placed it right now. Now you will see it is following the road as it is on the map. Previously, when it was on freehand, our distance at this stage would have been 1.11 kilometers. So we would have missed out on 40 meters. Now, it's not a lot, 40 meters, but over a course of, let's say, 10 kilometers, that's going to make a big difference. And also, your directions are going to be very, very strange. You're not going to know where to run to. Now, you don't have to select a point at every crossing. Garmin will make for you the shortest route towards the point that you choose so we want to run east and we want to run towards this corner here so we're going to make a point place that point over there now we can see the course that was created follows the road as it runs now we want to go up Place a point here at the next junction. And then we're going to make one. Let's make one here. So we've got the option of going up. So now we are 3.26 kilometers. We can decide that that is long enough. We just want to go home from here. Now you've got two options. You can either continue just drawing the map as I've just done now um, until I get back to my starting point. Or there's two other options that you can, can create. So if we just want to run to that point and then run back, we're going to press on this three dot button on the right hand side and we're going to say out and back. Now what happened was you will see our distance change to 6.53 because what Garmin did was it makes us run from our starting point all the way through kilometer one to past three and when we get to this point we just turn around and go back exactly the way we came. We're going to undo that. Now you see we're back to 3.26 kilometers. Now let's see if we don't want to go back exactly the same way we came got the option to say loop to start so if you select that it's going to make the shortest route from where you are now back to where you started so it is we're making us turn around there again as it did with the back and out but you can see here instead of having us turn right up and going up to the mountain it made us go continue straight and only turn right at our road over there now it is 6.28 kilometers. 
let's see our course info here we've got a course name which it just um, created generally but we can change that and let's make this tutorial custom let's save this course now we can either choose to make it public or keep it private we're going to keep it private and now to make sure that it's on our device we're going to select the send to device button it's going to choose your device and then to make sure it is on there we're going to go back to our home screen and we are going to sync with the device There you go. Now let us go to our device and see if the courses are on there. There are two ways to access our courses. Firstly, you need to go to your activity and apps menu by pressing the start button. Now we can go to navigate, select that. We're going to go down to our courses. And here is all the courses that's saved onto our watch. Now, you would have noticed that there was none on my phone. So, the courses that you've downloaded to your device, either your watch or your cycling computer or whatever, will stay on the watch even though you delete it from, the, from your phone, from Garmin Connect. You'll have to come and delete it here if you want to remove it from your actual watch. So, let's go to the courses that we created. Here's our tutorials auto course we just created. So, we're going to select that. Now we can either do the course, we can see it on a map. There you see the course we created. Go back out. We can do the course in reverse from here. We can see the elevation plot of our course. We can rename it from here. We can even edit here. We can view the climbs. There's one of two climbs, there's the second climb that we've got, and then you can obviously delete it. Let's see what happens if we say do the course. We'll go into an activity and you will be able to do the course. Now because we chose for it to be a running course, this default activity will be a run. The second way that we can access our course is to do it directly from an activity. So you press again the start menu and then you're going to choose a activity. So let's do a normal run. When you are in the normal run, you're going to press the menu button here on the left and you're going to go down to navigate, press start button. There you're going to choose courses, press start button and you're going to choose one of the courses that is loaded onto your watch. So let's choose the tutorial custom one. It's going to load it. Now from here you can choose a couple of options. You can see it on the map. We can do the course in reverse. We can again see our elevation plot just as we did previously. There's a name. We can edit it. We can view our climbs. Again, there's two climbs on this one. We can delete it or we can just do it. Now, even though we created this course as a running course, if we know that it will be fine for other activities, we can choose it for other activities as well. So let's go back out. Let's see if we choose bike. If we can select that course here as well there is the saved courses so can we choose the tutorial custom yes we can even though we created it as a running course it is possible to create a course on your watch itself it is very difficult on the small screen I would not recommend it but if you're in a pinch you can do it. I'm just quickly going to show you how. So you're going to go into your activities and apps menu by pressing start. Then you're going to scroll to navigation. 
press start. We're going to go to the courses, select that, and then at the bottom there is a new. So we're going to select new. Now we can name the course. Let's just keep it course 8 because we can type in other letters. Now we're going to add a location. So you can add your current location. You can choose from saved locations. You can use the map or you can use map points. Now if you use a current location, obviously it's going to use where you are now at the stage to start at. So let's do that. Current location is started. Ah, is selected. Now we're going to add another location. And this time we're going to use the map. So you need to scroll to where you want. You're going to touch the point where you want the, the next point to be. So we're going to scroll up and then we're going to select that crossing there. Now we're going to add another location. We're going to use the map again. Now you can see there's a little square there where I just selected. It's very, not very accurate. I want to go right here. So that's going to be a little bit cumbersome. Let's move to the right. Let's say we want our next point to be by that corner. Okay, now we've got the three locations. We've got the location where we are now at the moment, and we've got these two points that we created. We're not going to add another location. You can do as many as you want, but we're going to say we're done. Now you can straight up do the course, or you can go to map and see your course. That is the, uh, the course we just created right now. And again, you can just do it in reverse. You can see the elevation plot, you can see the name, you can edit it, you can view your climbs, or you can delete it. That is how to create a course directly on your watch. You will see it is now here at the bottom, or at the top, course 8DC. We can obviously, if we just go back into our activities, we can choose an activity and we can choose the course we just created on the watch now. And we can do the course. Okay, that is it for courses. Thanks for watching.